Not drinking today, then. You know what I mean. <laughs> The military and police force have like so many ways to incapacitate you in a non-lethal way unless that is you happen to be underwater in which case all they can really do is hope that you saw jaws and get scared in 2002 the u.s government commissioned a study to find the best way to deal with underwater threats in a non-lethal way and boy were the results hilarious so how does this all begin it begins in 2002 when the US government contacted the Applied Research Division of the University of Texas and said, look, guys, we've got no idea how to deal with underwater threats in a non-lethal manner. Please help us because we're kind of stuck. So what exactly do you mean when you say underwater threats? Well, the threats that like, the government outlined range from like actual spies trying to do like, you know, some spy shit to just people drunkenly swimming into restricted areas by accident. And like they need to figure out a way, how do we like get these people out of the water like safely to find out what the fuck they're doing there without like, you know, shooting them with a harpoon or something like that? Because when you're underwater, there's a lot of things you can't do. One, you can't like tell the person to stop. Say if it was just like some diver, I don't know, to like swim underwater and they accidentally swim into a harbour near a battleship or something. You can't exactly tell the person, hey, what are you doing? Hey, stop that. No, come back. Come back. So they can't hear you underwater, can they? And the government's like, well, how do we get them out of the water without hurting them? And also without the person who's getting out of the water also hurting themselves, because that was an issue. So what was one of the ideas that was put forward for combating underwater threats? One of the first that the Applied Research within the University of Texas suggested was attaching a flotation device to a potential threat and then quickly activating it to force them to the surface in the most hilarious manner possible. <laughs> like an underwater Fulton? Basically, yes. Exactly like an underwater Fulton. <laughs> if you're currently thinking, Carl, Brad, what are you talking about? Please enjoy this clip from Metal Gear Solid 5. So does this stop at the surface of the water or would it just continue to rise? I would hope that it just continues to rise into there. I'd want to fill it with like some amount of helium so that it didn't rise all the way into there but float like a couple of feet above it. So the person's just dangling above the water but I think it just forced them to the surface and because obviously the flotation device is so big and unwieldy you'd basically just be stuck there floundering around till whoever attached it to you came and arrested you. I like to think it floats above the surface and you look around and realise there's like an army of men with guns pointing <laughs> them at you. No, I want it to be like the Missy Elliott suit. I want it to look like that. So you're, you're not suggesting balloons, you're suggesting outfits you'd clasp onto Yeah, them. I want it to be like those big sumo suits that people <laughs> wear. Fucking Virat Beauregard just floating up to the surface. <laughs> because honestly, one, that immediately incapacitates the person. And two, it's really embarrassing. Because obviously the, the point is like, you don't want to just like apprehend the, like, the person. You want to like make sure you style on them as well. So like, you've got to make sure they're embarrassed by it. And then you can take like selfies next to them and they're just like, he's trapped in this giant orb of air, not knowing what to do. In my head, I'm imagining that the people patrolling these restricted areas in those fucking swan pedalos. <laughs> No reason, but tactical swan pedalos. <laughs> so like the swans wear like bulletproof swan. Yeah, and the swans wear like big tactical goggles. So, do you know what I like about swans as well? Have you ever played um, Viva Pinata? Uh, no. Basically, there's like lots of animals in that, and they're all like candy versions of animals. So instead of like a grizzly bear, you get a pizzly bear or a fizzly bear. Saying it's full of like fizzy sweets, and the swan. I don't remember its name, but I just know it makes the most amazing noise ever. See if you can track it down because basically the swans in Viva Pinata make a noise that is just pure distilled, I am better than you. It's just yeah. It's basically it's just every rich guy you've ever met at a house party at once going Nyaw. and also it won't breed until you put it make it wear a crown and I can respect that because I also won't breed until I wear a crown. <laughs> You know what? The swans from Viva Pinata are my spirit animal. <laughs> they act like they're better than everybody else and won't have sex till you put a crown on their head. I can, I can get down with that. I can get down with that lifestyle. So this underwater balloon idea sounds fantastic. And hilarious. Was it ever done? No. No, it was not. It was almost immediately discarded as an idea moments after being suggested. Why? Well, and this is completely true. 
When the idea of attaching balloons to people underwater to neutralize them a threat was suggested, people higher up dismissed it as an idea because the risk of both parties engaging in, and I quote, underwater hand-to-hand -hand combat was deemed to be unacceptable. That's some James Bond shit, isn't it? That's great. Someone somewhere in a government office got to dismiss an idea and they got to write, and I quote, the risk of it devolving into underwater hand-to-hand -hand combat is unacceptable. As much as we love the balloon idea and we love, like, you know, the examples you brought in. Thank you, Miss Missy Elliott. And she's just there in the giant orb suit, like, no worries, guys, I'm here to help. Anything for the troops. <laughs> <laughs> well, the risk of it devolving into underwater hand-to-hand -hand combat is unacceptable. And you see, like, three people there, like, biting the knuckles, going, oh, because they want to say, that sounds so fucking cool, can we not do it? Can we do that and set cameras up around? <laughs> can we not film this and stream it on YouTube? We'll, we'll pay the deficit off in a week with all the advertising money we'll get. But Brad, as it often does when we discuss things like this, it gets just a little bit better. Do you know another reason that the idea of attaching balloons to people was dismissed? <laughs> Not just because it would devolve into underwater hand-to-hand -hand combat, but because both combatants would likely be carrying a knife. Meaning, they dismissed this idea because they were worried that the people involved would just suddenly start having an underwater knife fight. This is a real story. This actually happened. People in suits sat down in an office somewhere and discussed this at length like reasonable adults. While well, I'm sat here laughing my ass off about it. I love the world sometimes. People, everyone doesn't carry a knife, do they? Well, you've got to underwater, haven't you? It's like all people diving naturally carry a knife. Yeah. You need it, you know, if you get trapped in ropes or whatever, or to like cut yourself free if you yeah. get trapped. Also, I guess, to look cool. And then again as well, if you're underwater, so the sharks live, so you've got to let the sharks know. Imagine if you just attach the balloon to the shark. <laughs> well, what, what makes you think? Why don't they attach like not don't attach a balloon to them? So attach like half a penguin, and the sharks will smell it. Blow the sharks in. I think the plan was non-lethal, Carl. I think trying to lure in the but sharks. Technically, you're not classes killing, as lethal. Technically, the sharks killing them. So we can't do balloons? Yes, because the risk of underwater knife fights is just too real. As sick awesome as that does sound. Do they have any other solutions? One of the other solutions proposed was to use tasers. This is underwater? Yes. And they suggested the use of tasers. <laughs> you know, the things that use electricity. And was this implemented? No. <laughs> Weird that, isn't it? You're probably thinking, of course they dismissed the idea of using tasers on people underwater. You can't electrocute people when they're surrounded by electricity conducting water. That's not the reason this solution was dismissed. The reason was because military brass found that the specific set of circumstances that would need to arise in which a taser could be useful was so like ridiculously small, it had no application in real life. So someone said taser and everyone went, oh, good idea, let's, let's go through the scenarios where we yeah. can actually use and the taser. And they came to the conclusion that there was only one real scenario in which a taser could be used, and that scenario was, if you see the person swimming on the surface of the water, you pull up to them in a boat, and then you shoot them from the boat with a taser, and then you immediately jump into the water to save them, to stop them from drowning as they'd convulse because of the electricity coursing through their body. And obviously, the same risk applies there, where the person may be carrying a knife, or may be like, you no, know, kind of pissed off that have just been tased and try and have an underwater fist fight with you. So they again dismiss that idea. In that scenario, you're in a boat yes. above them. Yes. You wouldn't need to taser them. You're already winning that. They're like, <laughs> You've got a boat, but they might dive under the water really, really slowly. At which point the taser is also useless. Yeah, and that's why I said, well, it's, there's only one scenario this works and you've still got to place yourself at risk by jumping into the water to save the person from drowning. Because at that point, the taser isn't a taser, it's just a drowning gun. Just shoot the person, make them drown. I like, that. I like the idea that they're like, oh, we can use it if we're sat on a boat and we tase them before they go underwater. Like, they're not going to hear a fucking boat coming. Unless, unless it's a tactical pedalo. Tactical pedalo, man, I told tactical you. Tactical swan pedalo. And they put the taser <laughs> in the front of its eyes. <laughs> and in it's the neck goes it's... down. <laughs> yeah! And when they're like in the water panicking, and they're like, the boot go down, catch them in the beak and pick them up. Oh. And then you pedal to the like the shore. Well, this is, you should I recommend I should have been working this. there because I could suggest tactical pedalos with inbuilt tasers. 
So yeah, but like your tail's only working in this one specific scenario, but that's why the pedalo has so many other things, including flotation devices. And it has legs that can grab things underwater. Oh, that'd be great. Oh. Tactical pedalos, man. Tactical. They should have just used that idea. Yeah. I should have, I should work for the government. That'd be great. So what solution did they come to in the end? Well, they didn't end up using anything as awesome as underwater flotation devices. Instead, came to the conclusion that the best way to neutralize underwater threats in a non-lethal way was simply to play very high or low frequency sound through speakers underwater to annoy people into leaving whatever area you're trying to protect. But let's not forget that for a brief but glorious moment in 2002, people being paid by the government actually argued about whether or not underwater knife fights were an acceptable risk to take when trying to apprehend someone underwater. There's quite a lot of non-lethal weapons out there. Yeah, there's a lot of ones that like look more dangerous than actual fucking guns and knives. Like, what's that like the Hornet grenade, which just fires like those thousands and thousands of rubber balls that bounce everywhere. And apparently like, they sting like just being shot by a fucking paintball that's been left in the freezer overnight. So oh, it's non-lethal, because all it does is just cause a lot of pain. But what about if that thing hits you in the eye? Like beanbag cannons are always hilarious. Well, like you've seen the, how... the thump they make when they hit people. Have you ever seen like I still want to invent the Bean Zooka from The Simpsons. Do you remember that? Where, they're like, um, where Lisa joins those fucking tree huggers and they're like shooting them with bean bags and goes, no, no, bring out the Bean Zooka. And it's like takes people out. You can't silence the truth with bean bags. That's nice work with the bag Zooka. You gotta love what you do, Chief. Mm -mm. Oh, well, it's something really dangerous. Like that other one, isn't there? You heard the mosquito. You heard about that? It's the uh, basically it makes the really high pitched noise that you can only hear when you're under a certain age. And they put them outside shops and stuff. And basically, yeah. any teenagers that are loitering illegally get basically annoyed into leaving because it causes like ear splitting pain to anyone under the age of like 20. It's like those ones that are supposed to get rid of cats. And I was always really happy when I could hear them because they my hearing hadn't gone yet. You've got a good hearing. They're still quite mean though. It's basically the cat just walks in and all of it's just like sensory, it's just sensory overload and just agony. It's like, yeah, that's the best way to like get a cat to scare it away. To build a higher fence, man. You don't have to torture animals. You see how fucking high cats can jump. You have to build like the great wall. You don't need to and torture their ears, though. It's still a bit mean, isn't it? When I was in one of my sound classes in uni, we did a test where we went through these frequencies to see where you were. And uh, I think I was, there was one guy who could hear right up to the top of the frequencies we had. I was like one or two below the top one. But this guy, like this noise, he was like, oh my, I can still hear it. He might have been lying. He might be one of those guys. That, yeah. yeah. He's a two shitter. Mm. One of those guys, isn't he? Two shitter? Two shitter. You not heard this phrase? No. Two shitter, basically. I've done one shit. That guy's done two shits. Ah, I see. I bought two lips. He bought three lips. So I went to Tenerife, he went to Eleven Reef. I one-uppers, man. I fucking <laughs> ate him. 